This channel is supported by Truefire. Truefire is an online library of lessons from some of my favorite players. There's thousands of lessons on there. You can use the promo code JNC40 to get 40% off of any of their courses. So it's been a, an interesting sort of uh, few hours. Uh, I have a DEP gig that I'm doing this evening. Um, a few guys that I sort of know, a, a good mate that I went to Israel with. Um, and so we've got a set list of music and stuff. And what I thought I was going to be using, I've got this lovely new seven kilogram um, cab. Um, so this is the Matrix Neolite. Thanks to Phil for recommending. Uh, really lightweight, like seven kilograms and Sounds pretty good. I, I wanted to try that with the Matchless Lightning clone um, and the pedal board that I've been using. This is what I've been practicing the set list on. So kind of drive here for rhythm, um, compression, boost, and a tube screamer here. And then the HX Stomp uh, to go to front of house, um, direct, and also doing the delays. And then out of that into the amp. But a spanner was thrown into the works because uh, there was a couple of things actually so one of the things on the set list it says Mr Brightside B major and I thought well that's got to be a typo right um, but no it turns out that they're playing Mr Brightside in B major which is a slight issue and then the other was you know I was just chatting to my buddy on the phone and he was saying like normally the guitarist uses a Kemper or um, a quad cortex and you know we're all in ears anyway and there's going to be a lift share so Putting all of those things together, um, I kind of got the impression, well, there's no point in taking an amp then, is there, essentially? Because 
first of all the bright side thing playing that in b major uh, i want to actually be able to play the riff somewhat close to record so i thought right actually let's go get the helix then and dial something in and is this how this is happening because you know people like guthrie govan using the fm9 live now um people you know even like john mayer supporting ed sheeran with the fm9 it just seems like there's like this acceptance now that probably for certain jobs a modeler is going to be expected and if it's happening at like my level where it's kind of you know just like wedding stuff where you know there's not really even a consideration for budget then i imagine that further up the line and actual touring stuff you know when people have to pay money to hire equipment um you know like you've got backline and all that stuff to factor in surely it's getting to the stage where most people are being expected almost to not use an amp i think that's a bit of a shame in some ways for me especially on like sort of normal gigs like in a, a smaller to medium-sized venue i really do think like an amp can help because it's not like the pa system is doing all of the work you can hear loads of acoustic drums um, but in a scenario where the bass player isn't taking a bass amp either, I think that the pressure is on the guitarist to uh, buck up and basically just use a modeler, whether that is something from Fractal, Kemper, Quad Cortex. I think they're even the Universal Audio Dream 65, my buddy Jake Loosemore, who is a bit of a tube snob, has to be said, has to use that on occasion. Um, so he's got it underneath his board for that. It just seems to me yeah if it's happening at the higher levels then and it's happening at the sort of normal people levels like you or i then it must be the case that people are expected to use this stuff i was chatting to david Beebe about this as well because last week or the week before i can't remember exactly which he did his first gig i think in a while on in his two and he said it's like getting pegged by scarlett johansson you know it's a 10 but you're still getting pegged um and he also <laughs> used a phrase it's like playing a v-amp into a crate um so i think that there is something to be said for that even though noel gallagher said this about the in-ears thing like he like obviously noel gallagher's got enough time to get things sounding how he wants sounding um but he said that basically once you go that way it's difficult to go back so maybe it's like a convenience thing maybe it's a clarity of hearing thing but he did say it's not quite as fun or you know not quite the same as hearing it um direct from your amp but probably better for your hearing the things that i do for in-ears to make it kind of work for me is keep the volumes quite low and don't have the guitar turned up as loud as you think you might want it um because otherwise you just sit on top of everything really loud and really direct if you bring that level down a bit you get a bit of the drums and stuff in your ears as well and it's not too pokey uh, I, that's what i find works best for me as well as giving the thing a listen beforehand. I was using the Helix for that intro with the preset that I dialed in yesterday. I've actually dialed in two, one with a poly capo up front. The way that I've done this was, it would be my normal HX stomp preset, but I've dropped it all down onto the second row. And then on top, I've got a poly capo to drop the pitch. I'll just show you that. Then the convenience of having the thing, you know, scribble strips and one tap you know changes you from having a lead preset with a drive and delay on to a clean with whatever you know nothing on i think that is difficult to get away from once you've got away from this tap dancing thing so i would normally play it up here and i've got my rhythm tone and my lead clean and clean dotted and a few things that I could turn on or off if I want like an air apparent if I want a clean boost um, and then on the other side I've actually got a, a kind of 80s thing going on uh, if I want it so I can go press this multiple kind of doing a multi-band compressor thing um okay and then the other thing i've got doing so as if i go to this preset 
drops me into my It's that kind of convenience which makes it a little bit difficult. So I would have to have figured out, I, I would have had to add an HX stomp to my board just to run the, the poly pitch thing or buy a Digitech drop or something like that and stick that in front of my board just to, to cope with this weird uh, key to put that song in. Um, so for that reason, for me, convenience wise, you know, I'm lift sharing, which is not that different to using a plane, I guess. Um, and having the necessity of being able to drop the pitch of a song uh, last minute kind of notice and then also you know being in his anyway you know is there any reason for me to take a, a cab to this gig if no one is expecting me to take a cab and amp um, and no one's necessarily asking me to do so then it's a little bit of a thing where you feel a bit of pressure and then you wonder what these amps were. And the switches on this Mesa Boogie Nomad broke the other day. The Pro Reverb downstairs hurt my back the other day um, and also is slightly broken. And it's making me think like these tube amps, have this Nomad has been particularly reliable. I've had it since I was about 16, never had anything really go wrong with it, but the reverb has recently stopped working and now this switch is broken. Um, yeah, I don't know, it's a bit frustrating, but. It, are you using amps still? Um, I think for a pub, medium-sized gig, I'd definitely still be using an amp. On Thursday, I did a jazz gig, took a real amp along to that, but then they put quite a lot of me in the monitors through the HX stomp thing, and I had to turn down on stage anyway because I was like, well, there's too much of me now. So, I don't know. In ears, are they the devil? A model is taking over, let me know your thoughts. Even a Kemper is a modeler now, right? Now that they've got their liquid profiling thing going on. Um, so yeah, modelers. I don't know, I still like to use an amp if I can.